and the party wanted to ignore. Look, I, and I, not that you're ever dishonest with me. You're always honest with me, mm -hmm. as far as I know, right? Yes. I really want you to bring it home on this point. There are people who are concerned mm -hmm. that he is erratic. You've got the tweets that come out when they come out, and it's like, wow, I can't believe he put that out there, right? They say he's not presidential. They say he, he's, he's not the guy you want to have on the, the hitting the, the nuke button, mm -hmm. right, with the codes. Working with him for the four years, right? do you understand their concerns, or do you think that they're, they just don't know Donald? Well, okay, so let's go back. Now, um, uh, first of all, I've, I've been in briefings with him on military matters. And what I can say without breaking confidence is he's very sophisticated. He understands, and, I, and this is something I, that I was disappointed with when I endorsed Ted Cruz. I don't understand why he doesn't want to make the public know that he knows the intricacies of geopolitics, that he understands what's going on, and he understands what's going on in the Middle East or Asia or things like that. I mean, he's, uh, he, over, he, you know, he, he has an over-reliance on the idea that he can communicate with the American people the same way that he communicated with them on uh, Apprentice and throughout his life. And even if you read his books, you know, and, he's, and he has like a simple way to, to say things, and I mean that as a compliment to him, but look, that worked, and we discussed this during the primary, that worked for a segment of the uh, of the primary voter and while he won 36 states one of the geniuses of Donald Trump was that he was able to see here was an advantage one of the reasons we said or I told him I advised him that you're gonna be able to win this nomination is because the field was gonna be so large mm -hmm. so remember so he was able to win it with basically 40 42 percent and at a point get 65 percent of these el of these delegates now let's go back to is he presidential right he can be okay has he been acting presidential up to this point no okay no. why is that I, honestly, well, why is it? Why, why is it that we see a guy who just sometimes seems like you just can't control him? Well, first of all, nobody can. First of all, nobody can control him, and he's not going to be controlled. And the one thing can I'm, he control himself? He, certainly, he certainly can't control himself. But let me just tell you something about that I really do respect about him. It was very easy to work with him on. There are some people I've worked for in the past, Dennis, and this won't be you if you ever run for politics. That would say to me, "What do I have to say? How do I say it? How do I get elected?" And then they'll just go do whatever they want when they run. And you know what, God, and, and they're sitting there in Congress, they're sitting there, you know, in state houses across the country. Mr. Trump said to me, one, you're not going to tell me what to say. Two, I'm not going to take issues up that I'm not concerned with. I may, you know, he may take certain positions that he'll take, which, you know, and he doesn't falsify these positions, but he wants these threshold issues to be his threshold issues. And what he would do, though, is he would adapt to the way that it could work for the voter. In other words, I would say to him, look, I'm not telling you what to say. You know, you get plastic and you get marble. And I can meld plastic, but you're marble, you're gold. Just let me help you understand how to make that gold sell into the primary, right? And he did, and he adapted there. And I think now, as you saw with the firing of uh, Corey Lewandowski, and he, look, he, he, he's seeing these polls, he's seeing what's going on here. And I'm sure he's been talking to the chairman and other people around the country, donors. He sees that he has to adapt to the general. Here's the thing, though. We sit here today, and it's June 21st. Mm -hmm. um, this is still a winnable race. Right. So let me ask you this. Yes. Because when, when <clears throat> you look at Donald Trump, mm -hmm. he, he wins the presidency. Let's say he wins right. the presidency. What does America look like? Does it have less illegal aliens? Does it have a wall? Does it have a temporary ban on Muslims? Does it have more people, Americans, working at air conditioning factories versus sending them off to Mexico? Is he really going to get those things in place, or is this just a bunch of this? Oh, absolutely. Look, he is not all talk, no action, as he likes to say. Um, he will certainly, that wall will be built, and there will certainly be, you will see that our trade deals will be renegotiated. And they'll be negotiated under the, under the contours of international law and how to do it. But, they, but we are all going to talk about penalties and things going on. And there's just not going to be talk. China, they will not be getting with what they do. Now on the Muslim ban. Mm -hmm. Look, I agree with you on 100%. Um, he could have made it more articulate and nuanced the way he released, the way he releases during the primary. And part of the problem was is he doesn't have to during the primary. And he's not going to during the primary. But you and I both know that that's a policy if you're talking about People, I don't care if they have uh, European passports, that if they were in Qatar, or not Qatar, let's say Libya, yeah. or they were in Turkey, or they were in Syria, they shouldn't be coming into this country, right? Correct. If we have Americans that are going to train with ISIS, they shouldn't be allowed back in this country. You, you've been around him mm -hmm. in environments where there are a lot of different people around. Right. Okay. Does he always have to be the smartest guy in a room, or does he like it when he has others around him who can be deemed smarter? 
Oh, you know, he, he, first of all, he's a listener. He really is a listener behind, behind the scenes. And I think that's one, a way, a way for him to learn. Or if the, you know, the people I would bring to him, look, I'm not involved in his business deals. I don't see his business. I rarely saw how he operated. All I ever see is that he never really loses right. in those deals. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and by the way, it's a testament to him, because look where he was in the 90s and you know, even into the late 90s to where he is today. Um, but everybody I brought in with him was, you know, he would want to, whether they were politicians, whether they were experts, he would want to learn from them. Okay. And he would agree and follow up with them, by the way. So you've got Donald Trump, the guy who you've done business with and worked for, mm-hmm. all right? But then you've got Sam, the guy who has his family, his relatives, everything mm-hmm. else. When you, at the end of the night, the people you love are the people you care about the most, mm-hmm. right? If you're just focused in on your family, what about Donald Trump, the president, scares you? Well, what, I, what scares me is the fact that I don't like these positions he's taken with Russia. Mm-hmm. I don't like, I, I, particularly with Russia there. And I also don't think that, something that I also don't agree with him on is, you know, Barack Obama came in with an agenda, a Palestinian agenda, and he just realized it doesn't work. I think that uh, Donald or Mr. Trump would want to walk into the office wanting to make a deal even force a deal just for the fact that he could possibly accomplish it between the Palestinians, between the Palestinians and, and, Israel. and Israel. Just to say, I'm the I'm the deal maker. I'm the art of the deal. Nobody's been able to get that deal done <laughs> because they can't get done, right? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. there's only there's only one fair negotiator on one side, right? Negotiating in good faith. Yeah. So, so do you really believe he would have a chance at solving what may be the biggest problem in the world? I I I don't think unless the Palestinians would decide to operate. In good faith. On the other hand, though, I'm talking about. Uh, we only yeah. have a minute left. I'm talking about personality-wise. What, what what scares you the most about President Trump? Adapting. Adapting to what? Adapting to uh, if things don't go his way. Let's say. So you say his problem with not adapting. What do you mean? So whether he's okay. being Congress doesn't agree with him. Congress doesn't. Let's say he doesn't wants, support him. Let's say he has a legislative agenda that he wants to do. Look, Barack Obama. He wants to build a wall. Okay, build, well, the wall. That wall will be. Pa- I mean, he'll get that wall through. I don't. So let's just. Well, he let wants get, to deport all the illegal aliens. Let's come up with something. <laughs> he wants to deport all the illegal aliens. Okay. So and Congress says no. We're not doing mass deportations. Just not going to do it. We're not going to break up families. And he's going to say, well, I promised these families. I sat with people. I looked at people who had people killed in car accidents and jobs stolen. Mm-hmm. We need to deport them. We've got, if you don't have borders and we don't send the message to the world, we're in trouble. And Congress on both sides pushes back on him. Is that the part where you're doing? What happens then with his personality? Oh, well, Does know, he I, shut down? Uh, no, I, actually on immigration, I just think he, he would. And I, maybe it's because I, I stand by his immigration policy and I worked on it. I think he would push... For, you know, he'd get 85% of what he wanted there. If he couldn't get mass deportations, potentially, he would be able to figure out to, um, you know, to, let's say, make it much quicker. Okay. Let's say to get, we're not going to jail these people. They're getting jailed somewhere else. Our country's not going to be well, paid. What do you mean by what his, I mean his, is, his problem not to be able to adapt? Okay. Adapt to what? Adapt uh, to him not being the only boss, the last say? I, I, would say, I would say being able to adapt to all the dynamics within the Washington legislative body. Like he's going to get frustrated with that process. Right. He'll okay. get really See, frustrated where, where, and where he's the boss, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, so when you're the boss, you listen to everybody's word, but at the end of the day, you make, you make, right. the, you, you make the punctuation. All right, on the, on the flip side. Yes. On the flip side, what's the one thing about President Trump that makes you feel comfortable with your family. Oh, there's so much. Well, first of all, the econ- well, first of all, um, I will tell you one thing about him is that he genuinely cares about people. National security, I trust him on. You do. I trust him. First of all, I trust him that if you know we're going to be able to fight these Islamists, especially domestically here too, unlike the way that the president, uh, our current president, likes to fight it, and he's not going to look at this as a law enforcement issue. I trust him on taking care of our veterans, and I certainly trust him on rebuilding our military. And I also think that what I would say, though, too, is I trust him on the fact that um, he will be able to, at the end of the day, stand by Israel. And I know that that's something very dear to him. All right. Sounds good. Sam, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. All right. Don't go away. We'll be back.